So we've got a ton of stuff to cover. Let's jump right in. So the event began with updates from Tim Cook. He first started talking about iPhones. They sold 9 million of them a launch weekend, making it the biggest launch ever. That is just a ton of phones. Five days after iOS 7 launched, over 200 million devices were running it. Today, 64% of Apple devices are running iOS 7, which is crazy. They jumped on over to iTunes Radio, over 20 million listeners of iTunes Radio, listening to over a billion songs in the U.S. alone, which is just a lot of songs. Apple loves to bring out the app developer number. Uh, they have paid app developers now over $13 billion with a B, which is a lot of money. Of course, they talked a little smack on the competition, saying that the competition's confused. Netbooks turning to tablets and tablets turning to laptops, and they showed symbols and so that uh, really taking some digs at what Microsoft was doing with the Surface. And then they finally got to what's new when they started with OS X Mavericks. Talked a lot about power efficiency of Mavericks. Said if you take the 13-inch MacBook Air that was just updated, install Mavericks on it, you'll get an extra hour of battery life, which is a lot. Uh, they recapped all the new features. There's a ton of them. Uh, but the best part of Mavericks is it's going to be free, which is kind of awesome. Uh, no matter what OS version you are on, Apple has a single step upgrade for you. Any iMac or computer purchase from 2007 and on will work. And it's available today, which is kind of awesome. Then they moved on to the MacBook Pros. We began at the 13-inch guy. Uh, gone on a diet. It is now 0.71 inches thin and weighs a little bit less at 3.5 pounds. Of course, they updated the chips. It's not surprisingly running Intel's Haswell with a fourth-gen dual-core chip. Uh, including integrated graphics, which should be, at least according to Apple, 90% faster, which is extraordinary if true. Uh, battery life has always been awesome. These computers, and that continues to be the case, uh, with nine hours of battery life. They added the stuff you'd expect, 802.11 AC, Thunderbolt 2, uh, and all kinds of other goodness. Uh, previous generation 13-inch MacBook Pro started at $14.99. Apple's given it a discount. It is now starting at $12.99. Using my keen math skills, that is a $200 savings, so that's always good and shipping today if you want to get a new MacBook Pro for yourself. Then onto the big boy, the 15 inch, uh, powered by Intel Crystalwell, fourth gen quad core processor. Uh, it's got the Iris Pro graphics, but if you want the GeForce GT750M, that is going to be available. Uh, nine hours of battery life, same stuff as the 13 inch Thunderbolt 2. 802.11 AC and that kind of stuff. But it also got a discount. Previous gen was $21.99. New one starts at $19.99. That includes uh, a quarter terabyte drive of 256. And of course, that is solid state drive, which is a lot of space. Also shipping today. Then they got to the weird capsule looking thing, which is the pretty awesome thing we saw at WWDC. And that is the Mac Pro. We know more about it now. It's less of a mystery. Uh, it's going to be running the Intel's next-gen Xenon chip, uh, the E5, coming in 6, 8, or 12 cores, up to 64 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Uh, dual workstation graphics, you can get the AMD Fire Pro graphics in there, up to one terabyte of flash storage, which is ridiculous. I'll probably have to like sell a leg in order to afford whatever that's going to cost. Uh, HDMI 1.4 is on board, it's going to support 4K TVs, and they went through and said how oh, it's the best 4K editing machine, you can edit live 4K content and edit it as it's going, which is supposedly a pretty big deal. Uh, introductory price, guess, what do you think introductory price is going to be for the base? If you guessed, under $3,000 by a dollar, you'd be correct. $2,999 be available sometime in December. And they also wanted to remind people that it is not only designed by Apple in the USA, it is also assembled in the USA. Uh, and that wrapped it up for Mac hardware. They went on to apps. They talked about new iLife apps, now 64-bit to take advantage of Mavericks and iOS. And the best part, though, they are now free with any purchase of iOS or Mac device, which is kind of awesome. You'll see that trend start to continue here as we move on to iWork, which is also free with the purchase of any new Mac or iOS device, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and then we finally got on to the piece de resistance, but everybody was there for it anyway, the new iPads. Uh, earlier this month in October, Apple sold its 170th millionth iPad. If you look back to the original iPad, I didn't think it was going to be that popular. 170 million is just a ridiculous amount of iPads. Uh, oh, even more ridiculous, oh, 475,000 new iPad apps. Let me get to the new stuff. The new iPad is called not the iPad 5, not the new iPad. It is the iPad Air, which kind of creates a brand new line of iPads. Uh, it's got the same 9.7-inch retina display, but it's a super thin bezel, as you'd expect. 43% less, in fact, than the previous version. Of course, since it's called Air, it's got to be thinner. 7.5 millimeters thin, or if you do the math, 20% thinner than the outgoing iPad 4. Previous generation iPad 4 weighed 1.4 pounds. The new iPad Air weighs 1 pound, which 0.4 pounds less. Uh, according to Apple, it's the lightest full-size tablet in the world, and it looks like a thinned-down iPad mini from the back. Uh, it's got the same A7 chip in the iPad 5S, which makes it 64-bit. It also has the M7 motion coprocessor. Uh, it's got twice the CPU performance as the previous iPad. It's all the specs we saw from the A7 chip. 72 times graphics performance over the original iPad. Uh, MIMO Wi-Fi expanded LTE support. 
5 megapixel iSight camera on the back with HD video, uh, the improved iSight camera on the front, dual mics, same 10 hour battery life, which is pretty awesome. Uh, going to come in silver and space gray, no gold and no touch ID. So if you're holding out for a gold version with touch ID, you sir or madam are going to be disappointed. Uh, the price, it's not cheap. $499 for a 16 gig Wi-Fi version or $629 for LTE, which is the same as before. Uh, it'll be available November 1st. Uh, oddly enough, the iPad 2 is sticking around. It's going to be $399. So for $100 bucks less, you can get a couple years old technology or spend $100 more to get the iPad Air. Seems like it only exists to convince you to spend more, to spend more money. Like you go to the movie theater and you're like, I'll take a small drink. And they're like, well, for only a quarter more, you can get a trough of Coke. And you're like, well, I didn't want to drop off a quarter more. It seems like a good deal. Uh, and then we moved on to the iPad mini, which now comes with the Retina display. And you can tell I'm excited because my hands are moving like this. Uh, and it's going to be called officially the iPad mini with the Retina display. Uh, spec for spec, it's pretty close to the iPad Air. It's now powered by the A7 chip. Pretty awesome 10 hours battery life, 5 megapixel eyesight camera, new FaceTime HD camera. Same color, silver and space gray, no gold and still no touch ID. But the price went up a bit. 399 bucks for 16 gig Wi-Fi and 529 for the cellular one, which is kind of unfortunate. The old iPad mini used to be 329, which is also sticking around and is going to drop to 299 bucks. So essentially a $100 difference between the iPad mini with retina display and the iPad Air. Uh, it won't be available at the same time though. They just said available later in November. And then we got to accessories. Crazy, crazy overpriced accessories. Uh, new covers for 39 bucks, new cases for a whopping $80 it seemed like a lot of money to spend for a case. So Apple introduced a ton of new stuff. Uh, we saw a new software, a ton of new hardware, new tablets, and you can sort of start to feel the passion Apple has for their products came back. They seemed super proud about the new iPads. Uh, and I'm kind of excited to see them. They also seemed really jazzed about the new iLife and iWork, which I've never really used that much, uh, but I will give it a shot. I'm excited to download Maverick, which is available today, so you should start that download process now. And the best part is, it is free. So what do you guys think? You excited, not excited? Is this what you expected? For me, the iPad mini with Retina display was really what I was most excited for. Uh, was there something you're most jazzed about? I know some folks in the office were looking forward to the iPad Air, some the iPad mini. I want to hear your thoughts. Leave it in the comments located in my pants. And of course, check out technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news, including the latest from Apple. Please give the video a thumbs up. We'll definitely appreciate it. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you then. What's up, everyone? It's Ashley. Thanks so much for watching that most recent video. If you enjoyed it, please click on the word subscribe right underneath me to get tons of more tech videos from us here at Techno Buffalo. We've got unboxings, comparisons, reviews, recaps, and everything else you can think of here on the channel. If you're in the mood for more technology, just click right over here to check out some of our most recent videos. See you next time, humans.